So next, I'm going to moderate a panel on the subject of preparing to go online, this preparing the uh, realities of store ops and data. So our panelists are Stephanie Lee and Jim Rivas. So come on out, guys. Thanks for, thanks for doing with this with us today, guys. Um, I'm going to embarrass them a little bit and uh, give their bios because, you know, a lot of times we just say, here's some folks from Oracle and no one ever knows who these people are. Um, Stephanie, Stephanie Lee, she's been uh, managing our Oracle product data team for the last year, and she's been involved with our e-commerce and data program for the last three years. Previous to that, she spent 15 years in merchandising roles and five years in store operations. So she knows a lot about this stuff. Now, Jim... Jim Rivas, he has uh, 20 years in the hardware retailing industry in merchandising and operations, and he's held senior leadership roles before coming to Orgel, which he came here at, uh, right around uh, 2020. You were joined us for that first symposium. Hired at the show. Yeah. And most recently, Jim's been running uh, e-commerce operations at CNRG, and we really think that he's uh, responsible, uh, where he was responsible for implementing the eight brands that are now live, uh, and Jim's now responsible for techno technology solutions and operation consulting. So, welcome. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, I really want to just start off, you know, this conversation, you know, Stephanie's coming from the data side, Jim's coming from more from the operations side. Um, as our dealers embark on their e-commerce journey, what, what are some of the things that they should be thinking about today to get ready? Um, and I want to separate it into those two lanes, you know, with the data and the operations side of things. So, uh, that's why I invited you guys. Um, the first lane we'll talk about is data. So let's, let's start with that. Um, Stephanie, what, what are some of the first things you would do if you were getting your data ready to go online? Um, start working on your digital assortments now. Um, you know, your, your project is more than just a tech project, first and foremost. And all of those lines that you see in your POS system every day, those are more than just data points. That's the stuff that you're actually gonna sell. It's the stuff you're presenting to your customer. And make sure uh, that you are involving all the right people into that process. You know, you wouldn't, for example, you know, have your tech guys out setting your end caps for the season, right? right. So you wanna involve your merchants in that process. And, and another thing to, another way to think about this, you know, if, if you're building a brick and mortar store, you're gonna design that store around the things that drive your business, right? You're not gonna build it and then start thinking about what to put in it. You're gonna wanna cater to those customers. It's the same thing with your digital store, you know? You, you don't wanna throw a bunch of stuff in there that you've, that's been discontinued for 10 years, right? right. A lot of, I know a lot of our dealers have perfect, clean, point-of-sale data. Nothing's bad in there, so it makes sense. <laughs> um, if you were to recommend some best practices, I mean, wh what would be the top few things if somebody was looking at, say, signing on to our data program, what, what would they do? What, what, where would they start with all this? Uh, first and foremost, um, um, a little concept that we like to call uh, data governance. Um, <laughs> Uh, and, and essentially, um, this is the way that you manage and model the data that you put into your POS system. And one of the best practices of our most successful customers is to have gatekeepers, have somebody who is responsible for managing that data, have a, a set of standardized guidelines, and, and stick to those. Makes sense. Also, um, but as I mentioned earlier, you know, this isn't purely just a tech project. So make sure, again, that you are getting all the right people involved in the process. All right, gotcha. Um, some, some other things that often come up is, is what kind of value could, could, does our program provide? So if, you, if there were some things that retailers struggle with, what are some things that they could, they could you know, actually use our program that they can't really do today? Sure, sure. Um, you know, one of the hardest, I think, uh, product areas uh, for, for customers to merchandise digitally is uh, commodities. 
And you know, there's, there's several reasons why this is hard. Um, you know, first and foremost, most lumber mills don't really offer good image and data packages, right? Um, so we've, we've, we have a solution for that. Um, we call it the lumber mill. Um, and with a little work on the dealer side, uh, we assist our customers in, a, in matching their commodity wood products to our library of over 36,000 um, enriched commodity wood products. Um, and uh, actually, uh, our uh, commodity wood product specialist is here. His name is Doug Vornbach. And uh, if you don't know him, he's uh, in the back row over there. <laughs> Uh, he might look familiar. He actually um, was an Oracle merchant for a while. Um, so if, if you're thinking of getting into the program and commodities is an important part of your business, um, you know, look Doug up. Uh, he'll be glad to answer any questions that you have. Um, also from the product data team, um, if, if you have any other questions about product data, uh, digital merchandising, uh, Chris Parnell um, is here from the product data team. And uh, Justin Dawson is here from the product data team as well. And uh, I'll just go ahead and, and take the opportunity. Um, if you do get a chance to talk to Justin this week, uh, make sure to congratulate him. He's actually uh, taking over the role of uh, manager of uh, product data. Excellent. And I know Justin will do great in that role. Uh, he's had lots of roles over 17 years with Oracle. So. And we've oftentimes uh, taken former buyers and pu pulled them into that product analyst role. So we feel that that's a good fit for them a lot of times with that product knowledge and where we add value to it. Um, so when we're, we're talking through taking businesses online, you know, what, it's, an, it's all about managing change, right? I mean, that, there, there's a lot involved with that. And so this, this falls a little bit more towards Jim's side of the house of the operations, but I'd like to ask you both, you know, just what, what, how would you recommend managing this change for data and operations? So Jim, I'll go well, first. Well, I think it's interesting. You know, I was with a company who we, we were uh, tr uh, going through an ERP change out and we, we decided to uh, hire, hire out to uh, clean up all of our data, and so we wanted to get it into nice fields. And what we had done is we, we didn't really think it was a change management exercise, so we, we actually spell corrected all of our assortment and found that you know, there was hundreds of misspelled words within our SKU mix. And the result of that was that we received a lot of feedback from our employees because they got so used to looking the SKUs up by the misspelled names that um, they could no longer find the SKUs. So it's like, it's those little <laughs> types of things that you have to consider. Um, and and, and it's, it's kind of like taken as a joke in lightness, and I see a lot of smiles out there, but it, it's the truth. I mean, you really have to get down to um, the concerns and change management to make sure that you address those things and over-communicate um, when you're making changes. Yeah. That makes sense. And, and Stephanie, will you, you have any feed, you know, thoughts on the data side of things, how you would manage that change? Well, I actually have a similar story uh, to the one that Jim just told. Um, it kind of goes back to some of the things I was talking about earlier in terms of uh, data governance and you know, kind of having an established set of guidelines. Um, early in my career, uh, when I took over my first uh, role as an assistant buyer, I took over for someone, who, of course, who had, had moved on. And um, she had a very interesting way of abbreviating words like assortment. And I'll let you <laughs> use your imagination on exactly what that was. But um, so I'm sitting in the boardroom and we're having a meeting, and we're talking about best sellers. I'm like, okay, Stephanie, you know, tell us what you're selling. And I'm looking at my sales report and I don't really know what any of this stuff is. And I'm like, I don't think I want to say what we're. <laughs> So uh, anyway, the first thing I did was uh, go back and kind of change how we were abbreviating some of those words, uh, just so there was no confusion on what we were selling. Got to have, got to have someone in charge of the abbreviations, I guess. <laughs> but that goes back to the, yeah, I guess. Uh, and Jim, Jim what, what, do you, what areas do you see that dealers struggle with the most when they're, when they're trying to figure out like a, like a plan? Like what, 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 do they, what do they struggle with? Yeah, I, th I think um, ma mainly uh, thinking about organizational structure and kind of like the new things that are going to come with an e-commerce side, because I think that the the, the normal thought process is, uh, hey, we're going to flip a switch and um, it's just going to turn on and everything's going to just be great. But there are other things that you know need to be considered, like, hey, how am I going to merchandise my site? 
And what I mean by that are you know, like, what do my ads look like online? Um, you know, how am I going to promote those types of things? It's, it's not just about who's picking the product because that seems like an obvious thing that when somebody places an order online that you need to, to pick the product and so forth. And so it's really about, you know, um, there's a lot of different situations out there. Some people have really large uh, stores with large chains of stores. And so you might have a role uh, specific to order picking in uh, one of those larger locations where if you just have a small, maybe a hardware store in a strip mall or something like that, where it might be an actual assignment to a role um, on, on right. maybe on data or marketing. Um, but all of those things have to be managed just like you manage um, today in, in bri brick and mortar operations and those types of things. So it's like it's, it's defining what the organizational structure is and then um, making a plan for that and really defining what, what it is that people are going to do. Um, the, sec the second thing I, I see is um, anticipating the issues that you're going to have and coming up with a plan to address those ahead of time because you can almost um, guarantee that, uh, that you'll have um, something that, that needs management involvement or, or what have you. And if you can think about that and clearly define it um, before you uh, actually turn your website on, it, it's going to work to your benefit, you know, having it maybe a written policy on certain exceptions or, or what have you. What I'm hearing several times over is have a plan. Have a like plan. Just have a plan. That seems have to be the, the refrain here. That's but, right. Gotcha. So, but how, how important is operational discipline in that? Like if, you know, from an actual, like say the site's on, we're yeah. doing stuff. What, at that point, how, how important is that discipline? That I think point? it's very important. I think, uh, you know, like if you're not good at it today, um, it's going to show up everywhere on a website, um, especially with inventory. So it's like the disciplines that you have to run your business from an inventory counting standpoint point to doing physical inventories annually, those numbers are going to show up on your site, and those are the numbers that customers are going to have the expectation to purchase from. And so they have to be right. Um, otherwise, you're just going to be disappointing folks uh, uh, in their initial experience with you online by canceling their order. And a lot of times people will try you out and um, they won't try you again. So it's really important uh, inventory. We've, we've actually had to stop some projects uh, midstream and get the inventory right. So it's, um, it's super important, um, not only uh, just from a quantity on hand, but you know some people may choose to the feature of actually locating the product which is really great for customers because when they come into your store, um, you know, that they, they might use your app for different things or they might use your website for different things like saying, you know, hey, it's on aisle two, bay three or what have you. And that, that could be available for you as well. And so the discipline of locating product, the discipline yeah. of counting product, all of those things. Um, if you're not good at them today, it's gonna, it's gonna hurt. Um, so just really, I would, my, my advice would be uh, become a better operator if you're not a good operator now, right? Because yeah, the e-commerce site's really just going to basically air it's more gonna, dirty no, laundry. It's going it's to yeah. it's gonna air uh, everything, yeah. really. So. Gotcha. And, and, and you're kind of, um, you know, you have the, the advantage today is that nobody knows where your dirty laundry is uh, because they're just coming into your store and shopping to where when you turn your website on, it's like, hey, there, there's the dirty laundry. Yep, yep. exactly. Well, what would you say, when, when should you start involving, let's say you say, hey, we're gonna start up an e-commerce project over here. When should you start involving an operations team in that discussion? Like, when, when do you bring them in to start learning all of well, what they have to do? I, I think that like when you, when you think about it, like I think people like naturally wanna be good planners, so they wanna go the extra mile and, and um, say, oh, I should be planning three or four months out. That's not the case. Um, and, and this is how I think about it. It's like when you tell an operator in a store to think about something, their immediate thought is to like, what do I need to do? And, and that's, it's like, what do I need to do right now? Uh, because it's an urgent matter and not just thinking about something because operators don't think they do. And so um, I, I think that it could work to your disadvantage to plan too early. We literally push all our training efforts um, you know, and, and preparation efforts up to a couple weeks before we go live. Um, and that seems to be the sweet spot for us. We don't want to push it longer than that because it kind of evaporates in people's minds. You want it to be fresh and relevant as they're, uh, as they're going live with the site.
that makes that makes sense. Well, you mentioned training just then. So, so what what kind of training to, should should we be thinking about for these operational teams? I mean, is there, they're going to have a bunch of new tasks. Yeah, I, th I think um, you know it's like go out and invest in a good video walkthrough program. I use Camtasia um, in try to create two to three minute segments of uh, explanation on how to do things with, um, you know, you moving your mouse and showing people exactly how to do something um, on the website. Uh, I, that, that's served us the best. We do that for Fan Builder, we do it for e-commerce, um, and it's really helpful. And, you know, if you, people's attention spans aren't like super long either. It's, it's about two right. to three minutes, believe it or not. Um, yep. And so when you get longer than that, um, you, you get a 10 minute uh, video, there's probably just too much instruction in there uh, for somebody uh, to like fast forward and rewind and find it and stuff like that. So it's really good to piece it out. Um, Laser focused on yeah, a minutes. And, yeah, and I think another thing that we've done is we, we always create um, quizzes and tests um, you know, on, on the content that's being learned in, in, uh, in our trainings and on our videos. And really, we, we, use, we use Google actually in um, the results that we get back from that. We actually, that's where we make our FAQs. So the things that people struggle with understanding, we make our FAQs and then we recirculate that to our teams. And that kind of closes the loop on the knowledge that, that you know, the, the things that people need to learn. So just, just a, a Google form. Kind it's a Google form, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's very basic. It's yeah. and free, the basic. There you go. Uh, that makes free sense for the most part. So what what about non-system things? Everybody talks whole lots about oh we got to get the system yeah. ready for this. We got to get the system ready for that. What about what else? You got to get ready for on the operation side. You know, um, we when we first uh, when I first started here, I I was um, you know. I was excited because we were the lab and what have you. We found that you know we had e-commerce sites, but we really didn't have um, a way for customers to figure out how to navigate our stores once they bought something online. So it's super important to describe exactly what's supposed to happen with customers um, from the minute that they hit order on your website. Uh, it should be described to them in the e any, any communication that they receive, and it should tell them what to do next. And so we even went as far to um, in the lab to create a, um, a sign package uh, that's all based on navigation, um, you know, pickup here, uh, curbside pickup with communication methods and those types of things. Um, and you know, it's it's really that's one part of it. The other part of it is a marketing piece. Um, Greg Stein will tell you all of it is marketing pieces, but it's a part of it's navigation and part of it is. Um, part of its marketing. Right, and, and I've seen, obviously, you know, if you go to any big box store these days, I mean, you just, there's signage everywhere about you, you what just, to do. You just for inevitably yeah. know, know what to do, right? Right. Because they've done a good job of communicating that to you. And we, we actually, like, you know, that, that sign package is available uh, through Tyndale. And, yeah, yeah. you know, like, if anybody needs that, talk to Tyndale, right? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So as we kind of wrap up this discussion today, you know, Jim and Stephanie, I just want to ask you guys, if there was one thing, and you know, so everybody always just asks, you know, when we're doing these kinds of things, hey, just give me, just tell me one thing that I can do um, from to take away from today from both the operations side, but also the data side. Uh, what, what could that be one thing be? And Stephanie, I'd like to go with you first. Um, before you make your first item submission, when you uh, enter the program, uh, you know, go through and, and clean up your data, especially if um, you use a lot of dump SKUs, um, things of that nature. You know, the, the, the number one reason um, the content team has issues getting everything on a site that a dealer wants to present to their customers is just because their data uh, oftentimes is indecipherable. So have good data standards, clean up your data. <laughs> that seems is to be, it seems to be a recurring refrain. <laughs> Well, Jim, what, what's, uh, what's your perspective on the operations side? If there's just one oh, thing, yeah, bit of advice. I, I don't know if I could do it with one thing, but <laughs> I'll try. Um, you know, I would say, um, you know, what, what gets inspected gets respected. And so I would say try your own stuff. Um, you know, if you, if you implement a website, go try it at a store. If you're a leader out there, go in and place an order and see what it's like for the customer to do. And, you know, on the other side of that, um, you know, see what's out there, you know, like look at what other people are doing, you know, that are creating 
uh, you know, great experiences for customers because um, there really isn't a, a, a trademark on good ideas out there. And, right. you know, if you could leverage somebody else's good idea, I highly recommend that, um, you know, to, to make yourself the best. Makes sense. Well, thanks, guys. It's been great. I really appreciate it. So for those here in the room, Stephanie and Jim can both be found in the Oracle Services area on the floor in the next few days. So thanks so much.